Welcome, everybody. It's good to have you here. We're here to celebrate the life of Goldie Mae Hartsook. And um, yeah, she was well loved and she loved well. We're going to jump right into the program here. And um, yeah, we'll just sing a couple hymns, one first, but before my wife comes up and joins me, we'll pray. Why don't we bow our heads? Father, thank you so much for this time that we can gather and, and celebrate and honor Goldie Hartsook. Thank you, Lord, for all who have come and come from far away to, to pay their respects. And Lord, I just pray that you will grace us here with your presence. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and be part of everything that we do here. Lord, we honor you. And we honor Goldie today. In Jesus' name, amen. You can follow along and sing along with the, the hymn that we're going to sing. It's in, the words are in the, the program that you received. Thanks to God for my Redeemer. Thanks to God for my Redeemer. Thanks for all thou dost provide thanks for times now but a memory thanks for jesus by my side thanks for blessed bonny springtime thanks for dark and stormy fall thanks for tears by now forgotten thanks for peace within my soul Hopefully I'll get verse two right. Here we go. Thanks for prayers that dost not answer. Thanks for what thou dost deny. Thanks for storms that I have weathered. Thanks for all thou dost supply. Thanks for pain and thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort and despair. Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. Thanks for roses by the wayside. Thanks for thorns their stems contain. Thanks for hope and thanks for fireside. Thanks for hope, that sweet refrain. Thanks for joy and thanks for sorrow. Thanks for heaven, peace with thee. Thanks for hope in the tomorrow. Thanks for all eternity. I just want to thank everyone for coming today to honor our mom. I'm Carol, Goldie's third daughter. And with sadness and with feelings of relief, we are here to say goodbye to my mom. In 2015, mom wrote this prayer. Dear God, I don't want you to make my life easier, but I ask you to give me strength to face all my troubles and eliminate stress. My body is trying to catch up to my age in a hurry. Well, six and a half years later, her age and her body all got caught up together, and she was taken home to heaven. She was 100 years, seven months, and three days old. Though we never thought she looked that old, and if you see her today, you wouldn't think that either. How do you say all the things that could be said of one who has lived for more than a century? There just isn't time or space to begin to remember it or share it all. So first I'll state one of mom's biggest pet peeves, and that was the spelling of her name. It's G-O-L-D-Y-E, not I-E, not E-Y-E, not E-Y, and not Y, G-O-L-D-Y-E. And we always laughingly joked that she would probably rise up and object if anyone spelled it wrong. And so maybe you've noticed, those that we've been in contact with in the last week or so, that. We've corrected that error 
many times. Mom was born in Hamilton County, Nebraska on April 28, 1921 to Peter and Esther Tunnell. In 1926, due to economic hardships, she moved with her parents, brothers George and Oliver, and sister Laura to Saskatchewan. They settled on the farm south of Saskatchewan, I mean south of Eston, and generations of Tunnells have farmed there ever since, right to this day. Mom told stories of her early life, including the move from Nebraska to Eston in a Buick touring car and a Ford truck with all their furniture. With the help of our oldest sister, Gail, Mom wrote a short story of the trip, particularly about her dog, Fido, who she got when she was a baby, and his adventures with the family. Oops. The story's factual, historical, and humorous. And if anyone would like to read it, just ask one of us for a copy, I think. I have it on email and I brought a copy here. Mom attended the Cromwell Country School with her sister Laura for grades 1 to 10. They would go to school by stone boat or by sleigh, pulled by a dainty donkey named Tiny and an old mule named Jack. But Mom's favorite way to go to school was riding on Tiny. Tiny had one great flaw, she always had to be the leader. So she would race to get ahead of anyone else on the road. And old Jack always managed to keep up with Tiny during the race. Mom said they soon learned to hang on really tight so as not to get thrown off during the races. Mom finished grade 11 and 12 in Aston and then went to Saskatoon Business College. She worked as a legal secretary at Hughes Law Office until she married my dad, Lloyd Hartzik, on June 21st, 1943. Dad was in the army at the time, so they lived in Kingston, Ontario, as he was an instructor at the base there. After Dad was done at the, in the forces, they moved to the farm at wartime, Sask, and they farmed in three locations. There was Forgan, and there was wartime, and there was Eston, and they were all 30 miles apart. So this entailed moving machinery each spring and each fall and in between. It was hard work, and sometimes there wasn't a lot, maybe more times than not, a lot of monetary reward. But I don't remember feeling that we were ever poor. We had the necessities and never heard too much about financial hardships. Six children were born to, born to Lloyd and Goldie from 1946 to 1957. There was Gail, Lorna, myself, Carol, David and Paul, and baby James Eric, who did not survive. Mom was a homemaker, cooking, weekly cleaning, spring and fall super cleaning, gardening, canning, driving the tractor, driving the grain truck, hauling water to the cistern, taking care of children, whether they were healthy or ill, and everything a farm wife has to do. I'll maybe mention one thing that my dad used to say about mom driving the truck, and I hope I, I don't insult any of you farmers who love to drive combines. My dad always said, any idiot can drive a combine, but harvest will not go well if you don't have a good truck driver, and that's why mom drove the truck. <laughs> Um, let's see, where was I? I remember mom and dad reupholstering furniture too. And I remember that wasn't always the most peaceful time in our home. <laughs> she sewed our clothes, she knit, she sewed baby outfits. I still have some of those. She supervised piano practice for all five of us kids for 15 years. She drove us to lessons, band practices when we started playing instruments. Mom and dad both loved music and they got us many instruments to encourage us to develop our talents. We had a piano, two accordions, and mom learned to play the accordion, and you'll see one of the songs she learned to play, though she's not doing it, but you'll hear it in the PowerPoint. We had guitars, violin, brass instruments, harmonicas. I think we probably even learned to play the Jews harp at one time. They loved to hear us play, and I know mom went to every concert and every festival that we took part in, and she continued to do that with her grandchildren um, in Eston as much as she could when they were growing up as well. I think this music that's been passed down in our family will go on for many generations to come. Growing up, I remember fun things we used to do on the farm besides work. We could play barefoot in the mum, mud and mum would just bring out water for us to wash our feet in. We played ball with the whole family in the yard. We skated on the sloughs and even in the cold weather, and our parents would have to come out and tie our skates. 
We had tea parties in the yard in the summer. I remember tea parties, we would drink water, we would eat raw potatoes, and we would eat raw carrots, and sometimes turnips. But the best part of that was that when we had a tea party, everything could have sugar on it. And so we got lots of sugar at our tea parties. We also had birthday cakes for our birthdays, a new Easter dress every year, and handmade Christmas gifts. In 1975, the farm at wartime was sold, and we moved to Eston and continued to farm there, adding more land in the process. Mom really enjoyed making crafts, and I'm sure quite a few of have seen what she's made, especially after her nest was empty, so to speak. She did cross-stitch, embroidery, cruel embroidery pictures. She made teddy bears and stuffed toys. She made sunbonnet wall hangings for girls, and she made jewelry hangers and travel pouches. She covered flower pots and added special decorative touches to everyday items in her home. She sewed coveralls and jackets and vests for the boys, always with an added feature to make them personal, and I know that those have been passed down from one generation to the next as well. She knit and crocheted baby shawls, made capes, hats for the girls. There were so many more things that she did that I can't even name them all, but I know many of us still have those things in our homes. When mom would come to visit, she also had tasks that she would do to help us out, and those were things that I know I wouldn't ever get done, raising a family. She would clean Lorna's chandelier, and it was sparkling shiny when she was done. She would clean my sewing machine, She'd do some mending for Paul and Diane and make them tapioca pudding. <laughs> um, and she would take gluten-free baking to Cheryl because Cheryl couldn't have the regular stuff we ate. She was also so proud of Dave's racing truck. I'm sure she sat in it, but I don't know if he let her drive it. She went to see him race in Las Vegas, took lots of photos, and she even bought a latch hook kit with a racing truck on it so she could make him a little latch hook rug but she didn't get it done and it's sitting on my shelf waiting for me to do it. Do you want it back, Dave? <laughs> Mom loved all her grandchildren and she was proud of them all from the time they were babies right up till now. She had 14 grandchildren, 35 great-grandchildren and seven great-great-grandchildren at last count. I'm also sure that she had a few frowns at some of the antics that they pulled growing up, but I know that she never stopped loving any of them. They all have different relationships with grandma, depending on where they lived and how often they would get to visit. And I know she tried to attend as many graduations and weddings as she possibly could over the years. Brent wrote this, and he sent to me not too long ago, and it's truths I learned from grandma. It doesn't always rhyme, but it's pretty close. Grandma said, it's good to whistle, it's great to sing. Always let the sunshine in. Girls can have tractors. This is true. They even sew patches and take care of you. Have a good bath. There's dirt everywhere. Don't forget those ears. Gardens, beware. Grandpa's Bible's well used. Just look by his chair. You should read it too and listen with care. You don't have to be old to make the decision. Follow Jesus always. And she was always pleased to listen. You don't always need lots. Just get what you need. Too much stuff weighs you down. From debt, stay freed. Practice makes perfect each afternoon. Check out Grandpa's guitar he made. It's even in tune. Remember your past. Your family's important. Keep lots of photos. In cedar you store it. There was a cedar chest. And this, just to bring in the Hartsuk, as aside from the, from the Tenels, Hartsuk men speak up strong and often get loud. And she'd remind you to say, I'm loved. Don't forget it. Stand tall and proud. Mom was a product of the 30s. She saved everything, just in case it could be used in the future. She saved everything that her mother had saved as well. So we have lots of treasures and family heirlooms, heirlooms in our homes that we are saving, and we hope that our children and grandchildren will treasure them when they get passed down and that they will remember the history that goes hand in hand with the treasure. Mom was 88 years old when she had a hip replacement. She always hoped that she'd be able to just jump out of that hospital bed and do everything she'd done 20 years before, but it doesn't work that way. 
When she had difficulty with her recovery, she moved to Mooseman, closer to Lorna, so she could get hands-on family care there. It was also more central for Gail and I to come. She lived in Ina Grafton Care Home and then moved to assisted living at the Bentley. As her health declined, she resided in Shainu and finally into Pioneer Lodge, where she was till her death. Mom faced many losses in her life, her parents, her siblings, her in-laws, and her husband of 52 years in 1995. She said goodbye to many friends and neighbors, nieces and nephews, and three of her children, baby James, just a short time after his birth in 1957, Gail in 2017, her son-in-law Charles, who's my husband, in 2018, and more recently her son Paul, just in January of 2021. She was the last of her generation of the Tennell family. Because she had accepted Jesus as her savior many years ago, she always knew that God still held her in the palm of his hand. She knew that she would see these loved ones again in heaven someday. And I found this verse in mom's handwriting on several pages in her belongings when we were cleaning out her room. And it's Isaiah 46, four. Even to your old age, I am he. And to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made you, and I will be there. I will carry, and will save. Mom didn't have many requests for this service. She chose the hymn that we just finished singing. And because the message in that really meant a lot to her, she actually wanted Lorna and I to sing it, but we declined. A very important request was that her son Daryl play He the Pearly Gates Will Open on his steel guitar. And she reminded of this several times in the last few years. And Daryl is pleased to honor this request and play it today for us. <clears throat> and while Daryl is getting ready, I will close with these thoughts from a card that I'd sent to mom just a year or so ago. Mom, have I told you lately how much you mean to me? <clears throat> have I told you lately how I appreciate everything you've done for me? Have I told you thank you for a lifetime of memories? and the love that made me who I am today. Have I told you lately how much I look forward to meeting you again? Have I told you lately how much I loved you? Well, I'm telling you today, I love you, Mom, with all my heart.
there's a peace in my heart that the world never gave, a peace it cannot take away. Though the trials of life may surround like a cloud, I have a peace that has come there to stay. Savior and King, when peace sweetly came to my heart. Troubles all fled away, and my night turned to day. Blessed Jesus, how glorious thou art. Constantly abiding, Jesus is true. Savior and King, when peace sweetly came to 
some glorious day over there to my heavenly home. Constantly abiding, abiding, Jesus is my sister.
We're so happy to have Marge Tunnell with us, and she's going to come and share a few thoughts with us. Uh, Marge was married to Peter, who is Goldie's nephew. And uh, as I understand it, uh, Peter and, and Marge were very instrumental in looking after Goldie after her kids moved away from, from Eston. And they also uh, farmed the land along with Peter's brother, Dale. And so Marge, why don't you come and share with us? Get organized. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm happy to be here today. It is it is a surprise, but um, I'm honored to do this. Goldie's life journey is over, and now she is in heaven, rejoicing with Jesus, with Lloyd, and their children. Gail and Paul, and all the relatives and friends. The scripture readings today are from 2 Corinthians 5, 1 and verse 6 to 8, and also John 14, 1 to 3. Uh, 2 Corinthians for, uh, chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, which is our body, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. Verse 6. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And then John 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to pe prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I had opportunity to do home care for Goldie. And... Uh, <clears throat> It was a number of years ago, and I got to know her more when I did home care. And I got to know her routine, which I might say was very structured, and it was very exact as to how she wanted everything done and when. But you know what? It worked for us. It was fine. We also had lots of times, lots of good visits, and times of prayer. Goldie's life was anchored in Jesus. She endured many very difficult events and hard times in her life. But God was faithful to bring her through. In John 16, 33, it says, In this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Nobody is exempt. We all get to go through things, all of us. No one is exempt. And Jesus says in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Goldie had written a note asking the Lord to give her strength to carry on, as Carol said. 
And that was about six years ago or a little more. So it looks like God had answered her prayer. It's been said that nothing is certain in life except death and taxes. And that is true. But death is not the end of the story. For those who know the Lord, um, the Bible tells us that what lies ahead for those who knows him is wonderful. There's wonderful truths in 2 Corinthians 5 that give us <clears throat> great hope. Now we know that if this early tent, which is our body, that we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal home in heaven, not built by human hands, built by the hands of God. We know we will have an eternal home in heaven when we die, but no one knows the date, the time in which we are going to have, take our last breath here. <clears throat> and you know, we're not guaranteed. We're not guaranteed another day, much less another year or more. As to what happens after we die, science does not have any, infor any useful information to tell us. It's speculation. And then there's revelation. Paul says in the word that there are some things we can know with certainty, many things in the word that we can know with absolute certainty. Our bodies are like tents. They wear out. They sag. They expand. They wrinkle. Joints <laughs> get creaky. Arteries harden. Gravity pulls down everything downward. The heart might slow down or might speed up. Eyes grow dim, may lose a few teeth. Bang, your back gets to be a little stooped. And arms grow weary, muscles become weak. And the body bulges in the wrong places. But you know what? It's all OK. It sounds like a terrible story, but it is how life is. Our bodies change. And they begin to change when we're not all that old. <clears throat> sooner or later, sooner or later um, we will recognize that there are many changes taking place in our body. At best, we can only slow down the process. However, 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, therefore, <laughs> therefore, don't lose heart, though. Even though your outer man is perishing, yet the inner man is renewed day by day, and spiritually, we, we can thrive. As we age, we pay more attention to things like diet and exercise, and fitness is in. Uh, we have Weight Watchers, we have Jenny Craig, we have Curves, probably many more. And uh, we have runners, we have bikers, we have people who uh, lift weights and do massive workouts. It's good to exercise and eat well and take good care of our tent as best we can. We're uh, bought with a price, we're not our own. We will one day trade in our tent for a new home Tents are flimsy, they're easily torn, and they're meant to be replaced. A building is strong, and it's built on a foundation. Our lives also here on earth can be built on a strong foundation of God and his word. Someday, <clears throat> we'll give up our tent and play, replace it with a building made by God himself. And one fact, one fact tell, that's one fact tells us something very important about death. Death is not the end. Although many people believe it is, death is not the end. It's a trade-in 
we trade in our broken down bodies for a new body. And here's what Paul says about our new bodies. It is from God, it is eternal, it is heavenly and not earthly. And that's what Paul means when he says, we know. There are things we can know in the word. Lots of things we don't know about the future, but one thing we do know. Our tents will be replaced by the building that God makes for us. In actuality, we're going from a land of the dying to a land of the living. For us here on earth, <clears throat> there's unrest everywhere in our world. We don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. We can know who holds it tomorrow, but we, there's so much change. Change has become our way of life. It seems that changes happen almost daily now. There's only very few things that are absolute apart from the word of God and the Lord, and they change not. It's not, ta uh, not a time to be living on the edge. We can be absolutely assured of a home in heaven when we depart from earth by accepting Jesus into our hearts and lives and living with him, living for him. He gave us his all, even gave his life for us because he loves us so much. His love is unconditional. It doesn't depend on what we do. It doesn't depend on what we don't do. It is unconditional. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We can't count on having more time or putting off a decision for Jesus. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Don't let your past determine your future. Our yesterdays are gone. They're behind. When we ask for forgiveness, we're forgiven, and all of our past is under the blood of Jesus. We have a brand new day today, and it's the first day of the rest of our lives. This decision is ours. No one can make it for us. We too can be anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ and know that we'll have a future with him. Heaven is a, is a place of God's, where God abodes. That's where he lives. And there, there's no sickness, no disease, no pain, no weakness, none in heaven. There's wholeness, no sorrow. But joy, it's hard to believe, isn't it? In the times that we live right now, there's so many negative things and so much really bad things that are happening. And we have to remember that God is with us. God is with us even through all these things. And when we get to heaven, there's no injustice either. There's no lack, there's no devils, there's no darkness. There's no lies. And that's amazing. And Goldie is experiencing that right now. And we're ever thankful to the Lord for her freedom from all the pain, lack of mobility, sadness, and sorrow. We rejoice in Goldie's homecoming. Thank you, Marge. We're going to sing another favorite hymn of Goldie's. You can follow along and sing along. Uh, the words, again, are in the program, When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. 
Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace in the mansions bright and blessed. You prepare this place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will overspread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day! Rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, to His beauty we'll behold. Soon streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory just as we close uh, just a few things that uh, we want to make you aware of um the burial and committal will happen directly after the service, and you're all welcome to join us. Uh, if you cannot or, or don't want to join us for the committal, there is tea and coffee uh, upstairs. And then also, uh, when the family comes back, there will be a brief lunch and time of gathering upstairs as well. And uh, later on today, for the family, there will be a supper as well. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time together that we can truly celebrate and honor Goldie. Father, we thank you that she is with you. And even now she's looking down and she's looking down with joy in her heart. So we thank you, Lord, for your word, your promise that we will see her again. Lord, we pray that you'll go with us as we continue on this day. Be with us, Lord. Pray your blessing over the family and everyone who has come, everyone on the line who has joined us. In Jesus' name, amen.